This first one comes to us from a true legend in the sport of pickleball, and that is Wes Gabrielson. Hey, Steve, how you doing, my friend? I've got a couple questions for you. Number one, when you were a student, what was your favorite class or favorite couple of classes uh, when you were in school? Man, oh, man, that guy's grown a beard, eh? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> man, it looks really cold up there. So he, was, he wants to know what my favorite class was. Okay. Well, that, that was very simple. Uh, you know, when I was in, in high school, I, I loved cooking. Um, you know, because that's where all the pretty girls would be. So I ended up, you know, taking a cu cu cooking class and, uh, you know, with, with one of my better friends and we, we had a good time there. Nice. That's smart. That is a very smart choice. Right. <laughs> it's smart. Good. While the, while all the other guys, while the other guys were doing like mechanics and woodwork and metalwork and, you know, I, I was learning how to uh, make pancakes. So ask me to, to change a tire and it's not going to happen. So. Well, that's not the only question from Wes. Let's go with question number two. Second of all, when you were in the States for the month and a half that you were recently playing in tournaments, uh, what was the thing you enjoyed the most about the U.S.? And my last question, what did you miss the most in Canada while you were in the States? So hope you're doing well, my friend, and I uh, hope to see you on the court somewhere soon. Oh, wow. That guy is a, is a great guy and a, a really good friend, uh, an amazing competitor. I'm, I'm so lucky to have uh, Wes for some tournaments next year. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, you know, he was asking about what I enjoyed about being in the U.S. And, and it, that one was, was really simple for me. Um, it was getting back to competing again. Uh, it was reconnecting with uh, all my friends uh, in the pickleball world that I hadn't seen in, in some months. So we were all very careful uh, and, and made sure we were responsible about our socializing. But I just, uh, I, I missed the competition and, and, uh, and that's what I really thoroughly enjoyed the most. And I guess what I, I missed uh, about home in Canada was a few things. Uh, obviously, I miss my wife very much, um, you know, my kids, and, and, and most importantly, uh, I miss that nice, warm, comfortable bed and a home-cooked meal. Because I'm telling you, eating out for like 55 or so days straight, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, uh, it, it got pretty old pretty quick. <laughs> This next question comes from a few of our favorite members of Newman Nation. And this one comes oh, from boy. Riley, Lindsay, and Baby Cora. Hey there, SDP. This is Riley, Baby Cora, and Lindsay. Cora and I were wondering, what are you going to be this year for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, uh, congratulations to Lindsay. Cora looks absolutely perfect. So that's a... Uh, a really huge, uh, huge bonus for them. Um, for Halloween, wow. Like, I, I really love Halloween. Uh, I, I, I used to really decorate the yard and, you know, I used to dress up, uh, you know, for the kids that would come and we'd give candy out. Um, I was always a big fan of wearing, you know, that Michael Myers blue jumpsuit with the, uh, you know, the hockey mask and I would kind of lurk you know, in behind the trees. And when the kids would, we, you know, would, would come up for the candy, I'd jump out of the, uh, you know, out from behind the tree and, and really freak them out. And that's what I'm going to miss this year because uh, there is no Halloween this year in, in, uh, in Canada. So I'll miss that. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely something to do with a, a horror picture. That will be me. That wasn't the only question from that group. Let's go ahead with uh, question number two from Newman Nation. And my question is, after all your big tournament winnings, where are you going to treat Stacy to a vacation to? Oh, boy. I took her to Hilton Head. You know, it, 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 we, we've uh, both never been to, to South Carolina. We were able to at least spend some of the time on their beautiful beaches there. Um, so it was Hilton Head, guys. And that's where we actually celebrated our, uh, our I think it's 12th wedding anniversary. This one is coming from Anna Lee Waters. Hey, Steve, we saw in a recent video that you're a huge sugar fan, and I am too. So I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite sweet treat? <laughs> well, that's a, a really good question. Like, I like, uh, you know, sour keys. You know, I, I love those. Uh, I can eat those until I get blisters on my tongue. Um, I like any sort of, like, black licorice. 
um, and anything to do with like chocolate and caramel. So like those things for me are incredible. Um, the odd time I'll, you know, probably bake a cake. I love cake, you know. Um, I'm a big fan of peach pie or like a coconut cream pie or something like that. Um, so yeah, it, it, that I've got a massive addiction to. So I literally have been without uh, any sort of sweets for three days now, and I, and I and I don't feel so good. So <laughs> when when will when will those withdrawals stop? We can't have a question from Anna Lee Waters without having her women's doubles partner Lee Waters chime in with a question. So here's a question from Lee. Hey Steve, hope you're doing well. So I'm wondering. Since you're Canadian, are you a big ice hockey fan? And I'm also wondering, did you grow up playing any ice hockey as a kid? Sadly enough, um, I'm not a huge hockey fan. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a, a, a bandwagon guy, so if our team is making a playoff run, uh, I might start watching. Uh, I never played any form of ice hockey uh, as a kid, but uh, of course played a ton of ball hockey and, and stuff like that. So I might have failed as a Canadian for you there, Lee, but uh, I'm not, a, not a, a huge hockey fan. And that kind of ties in with this next question. And this is actually a pretty exciting one because this next question comes from a former Detroit Red Wing who has actually won the Stanley Cup four times. And this question comes what? from fellow Canadian, Chris Draper. Hey, Steve. Chris Draper here with the Detroit Red Wings. Hope all is well. First off, I'd like to comment on your sport, pickleball. Been playing it now for about six months, uh, anywhere from five to six days a week, uh, up to anywhere from two to three and a half hours a day. So something uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying. I have a question for you. Rivals. Rivals are obviously big in my sport. And I'm curious to know who would be your biggest rival? Who is somebody that you really look forward to, you can't wait to play, and knowing that it's going to be an ultra-competitive game? Look forward to your answer. Thanks for your time. That is so <laughs> awesome, Chris Draper. I've got a, a, one of my, my best friends is a huge, I'm talking huge, epic Detroit Red, Red Wings fan. So he, he, uh, he'll be very jealous that uh, Chris Draper asked me a question. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome question. Um, you know, for, for me, um, I, I've got a, a fair amount of, of players that I, I truly enjoy playing um, at this highest level. But, you know, this is going to come to uh, pretty much no surprise, I don't think, to anyone. Um, and, and most people know this. Um, uh, anytime I step onto the court with a, a young fellow named Ben Johns, um, y you know, my, <laughs> my, my uh, adrenaline always kicks into another gear. Um, when you are playing the, the very best in the sport, um, it, it's a huge thrill for me. And uh, I, I, I truly love competing a a against Ben. Uh, and uh, also, if, if Ben is watching, I'm going to look into the camera and say, I'm coming for you in 2021. Nice. You hear that, Ben? He's coming for you. This next question comes from somebody who has become a very good friend of ours in the pickleball world, and that is the one and only Irina Tereshenko. Hi, Steve. I do have a couple of questions for you. Uh, number one is I'm uh, looking forward to playing the PPA Toronto with you. And of course... Uh, you're a gentleman and you will always try to make your partner feel comfortable and learn about the culture of the of Canada. So what are some of the activities that we can do to learn more about Canada and get comfortable and perform well at the event? You know, that's a really good question, Arena. Um, I may take her up the, uh, the CN Tower. Uh, and that's a pretty awesome place to go. Um, there's a ton of amazing food. Uh, in Toronto, um, and if Arena likes hockey, I, I could take her to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Here is question number two from Irina. While you spent a few months on the road competing in the United States, what was some of the food that you missed from Canada? Oh, that's, that's another good question because I love my food. Um, <laughs> You know, like I, I found when, when we were, were traveling, I, I was having a tough time finding, you know, decent, uh, like home cooked meals, you know, like, you know, just your, your basic, you know, uh, steak and potatoes, like a really good steak, right? 
Uh, I had just found that some of the cities we were in and the people that I was traveling with, uh, they were uh, were happy to go get burritos at uh, Chipotle. <laughs> so you can get sick of salad bowls after a while, right? So I love like things like prime rib and steaks and, um, you know, a, a good, really good chicken, you know, barbecue chicken. Uh, although I did have one fantastic meal when uh, when we were in Texas. Uh, uh, Joey Farias and I uh, went uh, on the last day to this hole-in-the-wall uh, barbecue spot. And, and it was just the weirdest thing. We had no idea, you know, uh, where we were going. We just searched barbecue. It took us to this little hole-in-the-wall. And it was probably some of the best barbecue I, I had ever had. And uh, so that, I, I will admit, was a very good meal. This next question comes from our previous podcast guest, Callie Smith. Hey, Steve, it's Callie. I wanted to know, because you're a pretty easygoing guy, what your top three biggest pet peeves are. Top three biggest pet peeves. <laughs> oh, my God. That's going to be hard. You know, like, oh, <laughs> boy. I, I know my wife's probably thinking I could think of a 100 things. <laughs> that he thinks are his pet peeves, but uh, uh, <laughs> I guess uh, unintelligent people. Sorry, I, you know I hope that's politically correct, but uh, I, you know I, I'm uh, I'm not a, a fan of, of of people that are simple thinkers. I think doing things kind of halfway. So if you say you're going to do something and then you uh you don't finish the task i i definitely don't like that kind of halfway thinking either um that's about it you know like i i just can't really think of anything too much off the top of my head aside from those two things so this next question comes from uh i think one of the nicest guys in the world of pickleball and that is deckle bar hey steven i hope you're enjoying the quarantine and some rest i have uh, two questions for you uh, the first one is, how do you always bring the best out of your partners? And the second is, what is your favorite hotel chain? <laughs> oh, boy. You really put me on the spot today. <laughs> um, I, I think from a, a, a partnership perspective, um, I've always been the type of partner who's been really supportive um, and... and um, always kind of committed to helping somebody through a difficult time because like, let's face it, it, it's pickleball, right? And we're going to go through ups and downs on a match. Um, the worst thing you can do to your partner when they're struggling is, you know, do the eye roll or throw your hands up in the air and it, you know, just kind of give that negative body language. Um, I, I just, you know, I like to be there for my partner on court. And if they're struggling, I can usually tell when they are and, and you know, typically take a time out and have a little chat with them and kind of get everybody back on track doing what they all do best. So that's kind of what I do when I, I can see a partner kind of slipping a little bit. And, and I've played with a ton of great partners of well, as well that are, you know, equally as supportive as, uh, if not more than I am. So, um, y you know, that's pretty much what I do there. Um, now, with, with the hotel chains, you know, and Pat Smith uh, uh, touched on it a little bit earlier when I was chatting with him, um, it's definitely the Red Roof Inn. And, it, you, know, I, 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 you know, for all the thousands of people that are, you know, are, are watching this, hopefully, go check out the Red Roof Inn, especially the one in Middletown. It is amazing. The decor is amazing. Um, it's clean, friendly people. Uh, you know, it's one of those places where you, you, you truly can feel at home. <laughs> it could be a tad bit of an inside joke with a big group. So could be. <laughs> All right. So this next question uh, it comes from definitely one of the all time greats in the world of professional pickleball. And that is Lucy Kovalova. I just have one question for you. If you can travel anywhere in the world, either for vacation or to play pickleball, where would it be? And why? Um, I've always been a fan of, you know, tropical weather, um, you know, so the white sand, kind of the, the blue, clear water, the, the warm temperatures, um, you know, so I, I would be a, you know, a Caribbean guy for sure. It, it, you know, however, there's also like I've traveled a lot 
uh, with tennis. And I was always a really big fan of, of parts of, of South America and, and, uh, and, and Europe too. Um, there's just so many beautiful places to go, but if I had to choose one, it would definitely be, you know, somewhere in the Caribbean, maybe Cuba, um, you know, Dominican Republic, you know, Mexico, you know, somewhere where, you know, it's gorgeous and sunny. So this next question comes from a good friend of ours. It's somebody that we had the pleasure of doing some live stream commentary with and uh, one of the voices of the APP tour live streaming, and that is Dominic Catalano. Eddie, Webby, Deeks, what's going on, guys? My question to you, Deeks, tonight. First time we met, Nationals, a couple years ago, you walk in, some really sick threads, as always. My question to you is, up in Canada, where do you get those sick threads, eh? <laughs> oh, I love that guy, and, and and I remember the moment in particular. Um, you, you know, that's that's a really good question. You know, like I I don't travel so much uh, with those sick threads uh, like I used to. Uh, I like to travel pretty light these days, but um, I, I was always a you know, kind of a name brand guy, you know, so I would do a lot of shopping at, you know, places like, you know, Macy's and uh, I, I bought, I know the shirt that he's talking about too. I, I bought that at a little uh, boutique in, in Whistler and, uh, and, and definitely overpaid for it. Uh, but damn, it looked good. So it, uh, I was okay with that. Well, this next question comes from somebody that you have a, uh, a pretty good history with in regards to playing in pickleball tournaments, and that is Mr. Rick Witzkin. Question for you is, what part of your junior tennis career would you say most helped you become such an accomplished pickleball player? And conversely, what part of your tennis game did you have to maneuver, navigate away from for pickleball? I was typically a, a, a singles player in in, in juniors. Uh, that's where I felt I excelled the most. Um, so when I started playing more doubles, uh, you know, in kind of my my senior uh, pickleball or tennis years, um, that's where you know the you know the touch and the hands kind of you know helped uh, helped with with that end of of the pickleball game. Um, and, and I had to kind of, he, he asked about um, what part of tennis did I had to adjust to play pickleball. So I, I had to basically remove like a lot of the power uh, that I would have uh, play in tennis. So, you know, in, instead of that mindset of, you know, pretty much crushing serves and crushing ground strokes, I had to kind of think about, you know, the more strategic soft part of, uh, of the game of pickleball and the patient's end. The next few questions are actually courtesy of our friend and former mixed partner of mine, Kim Bashroosh, and she got all these while she was at the APP tournament in Hilton Head last weekend, and we're going to start off with one from Sarah Ansbury. Okay, Steve Deacon, when is your anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> this, this one could get you in trouble, so hopefully oh, you know the answer. <laughs> wow. I, I just started to sweat here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's actually an easy one for me to remember. It's, it's September 9th of 2009. So 09, 09, 09. This next question comes from Regina Franco. Hi, Steve. What is your favorite paddle and why? It's of course the, the, the head gravity paddle. And uh, I, I just started playing with, with, uh, with head back in August. And when I put that gravity into my hand, uh, it, 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 I just get a little more pop, a little more feel, um, spin. It's got that ni nice textured paddle face on it. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much I love that paddle. This next question <laughs> comes from a good friend of ours who has also been on the show, Corinne Carr. Hey, Steve, Mr. Canada. My question for you is... Can you get me hooked up with Lululemon? It is my favorite thing about Canada. <laughs> but isn't it everybody's thing uh, favorite thing about canada <laughs> if i can't get on with lululemon uh, I, I don't think i can get anybody else on well this next question comes from the one and only johnny goldberg hey steve boxers or breeze 
But yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like that's the only reason everybody tuned in. Like, I feel like our our rate like, uh, people are going to stop watching now because you answered the one question everybody cared about: boxers or briefs. Wow. Yeah. No, I'm I'm definitely a boxer briefs guy for sure. Yeah. So this next question comes from uh, somebody that you have a good history with, and that is Eric Lang. Hey, uh, Steve, you play a lot of pickleball tournaments. And I'm sure there are many other spouses that are jealous of the fact that you get to get out there uh, and tear it up on the tournament circuit. So my question for you is, how would you recommend uh, a husband or a wife approaching their spouse and requesting to play more pickleball tournaments? Because clearly you've got that mastered. Thanks, man. Take care. Bye-bye. (laughs) holy cow that is that is a definite (laughs) hot seat question i'm not gonna lie um you know there's a a, (laughs) there's a couple of things that gotta happen uh first and and it's got to be the right time of your life right like (laughs) i find if you've got you know if you've got like really little kids um obviously they take a great deal of time and you know this is why me kind of playing pickleball now um you know was a was good timing you know my my kids are are, are mostly grown um stacy and i are uh are pretty much empty nesters uh, at, at this point so you know uh, to answer eric's question it wasn't always easy you know like i i spent a, a lot of time on the pickleball court uh early on and and sometimes probably more than i should have and uh you know um uh, Stacy will, will tell you this, you, you know, like we, we did definitely have some challenges with it. Um, and, and, and Stacy uh, eventually decided uh, if you can't beat them, join them and started playing pickleball herself. And now, uh, you know, she has her group that she plays with and, and I have mine. So it, it seems to have worked itself out. Uh, but, but definitely it, you have to tread lightly, Eric, trust me. Uh, and don't go too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> this next one comes from uh, a Michigander and very good friend of ours, and uh, she is one of the tournament directors for the Beer City Open. This one comes from Andrea oh. Coop. Hi, Steve. How's the weight loss challenge going? You're my motivation. We're here in Michigan. It's 40 degrees at Outdoor Spin Class. Uh, we just got back. I know you're in quarantine now, so are you working out three times a day? Tell us about that challenge with Adam Stone. We need to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it, you know, it was funny. You know, Adam and I, you know, kind of looked e- at each other when we were at the Arizona Open, and he was like, "Man, I think you you put on a little bit of weight." And I said, "Dude, I think you've put on a little bit of weight." So I I, I challenged Adam, and we we had we made a, a friendly gentleman's bet that may have a bit of a, a wager uh, around it, uh, and it's uh, who's going to be able to to lose the most weight and add a little bit more muscle. And uh, right now I'm on day three uh, of my uh, my new training regimen. I've been working out in my garage. Uh, I've rehired uh, my trainer again and uh, I'm taking it seriously the next nine weeks. So it's, uh, I was just telling Stacy today how like I'm, I'm, I'm sore every single day. I, I'm working muscles that I, don't even realize I have. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm hopefully it will be transformed in nine weeks. This next question comes from another good friend of ours, Joey Farias. Hey Steve, got a couple questions for you. Very, very important. So my first question is, what is your go-to post tournament meal and pre tournament meals, as well as what bacon is better, regular bacon or Canadian bacon? <laughs> um, I, I'm a huge uh, Canadian back bacon fan for sure. Only if it's cut really thin and cooked crispy. For me, like a, a really good pre-tournament meal, like in the morning prior to an event, um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of like a, like a huge bacon and eggs and toast and hash browns and fruit and uh, oatmeal and a coffee to kind of get my day going. And uh, the, the, the post-tournament meal, I've got a few, um, you know, like I, I sometimes will go for a simple drive through at the uh, Taco Bell, uh, which I love, uh, three Taco Supremes with extra sour cream. 
Um, you know, and also uh, to touch, we I, we touched on it earlier. Joey and I went to this little, um, you know, this barbecue place in, in Texas after we finished our event there together. And I, I just crushed like a, a brisket and rib p- plate. So anything with like tons of red meat on it. Um, and I, and I always seem to, you know, obviously wash it down with about six Cokes. So that's no good for me anymore from what I understand. So I'm going to have to, uh, have to substitute that with something else. We have a two part question to end things with. And this question comes from Lauren Stratman. Hey, Addie and Lovey. Hey, Steve. Uh, this is Lauren Stratman. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee at home chilling. And I have a couple questions for you, Steve. Number one is I want to know what your pre-match nighttime routine is and your before-match routine. Holy cow. Okay. Well, for me, like, and probably everybody knows this, uh, I, I'm a type of guy that will, will have a, a really big meal the night before, typically. And uh, I'm, I'm the, the type of guy who will be in bed probably by 9 o'clock. You know, um, I, I need to get at least you know, eight to, to nine hours sleep before I have to get up on a, on a game day. Uh, and what was the other question? The pre-match right. routine, like right before the match. That one's pretty simple. Um, basically, it's, it's a simple 15, you know, 20 minute warm up uh, and, and tons of, uh, of hydrating. Here we go with question number two from Lauren Stratman. And number two is if you were stuck on an island with one pickleball court and you had to bring three people, who would you bring? All right. See you guys. Oh my God. That is the worst possible question <laughs> I've been asked today. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. Um, wow. I, I just, you know, here's the thing as a, as a, a Canadian, right? Um, I truly love everybody. Okay. That I play pickleball with. So this is going to be a very tough question for me. Um, if I had to bring, I'm going to even go outside of the pickleball world here, and uh, I'll say I'll bring, uh, I'll bring my wife and my kids. That's the best possible. Oh, I don't forget and my dogs right. and my dogs. Don't forget my dogs. I'm going to bring my dogs too. <laughs> nice. That's going to keep. Very that's going to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> that's going to keep me out of trouble with the pickleball world. Uh, you, you know for sure. Pickleball addicting and fun. That's no joke. Pickleball and it's not just for old folks. Pickleball. 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 Pickleball.